Hello and good evening and welcome to tonight's Insta Live. I'm Tara Palaki and tonight I'm coming to you with another episode of Honouring Your Body. And this series is all about creating this space to learn to listen to our bodies, recognise and honour what they're telling us. And tonight I'm going to be joined by a very special guest who is going to be, we're going to be talking through being an empath and a highly sensitive person. So I can see that he is here. So without further ado, let's bring Phil in. Oh, oh, I've got two people requesting to be live. Uh, Phil, could you uh, request to be live? Because otherwise, I think I'm going to end up with both of you on here. <laughs> now I've got Abby as well. Phil, could you try again? I'm going to invite you. <laughs> Sorry, my love, don't worry. Oh, hang on, here we go. Boom! Boom, right. <laughs> Is that working? <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so, I, right. I've got request to join still up there. I don't know what that is. But you can see me, can you? Yeah, can you see and hear me okay? Yeah, kind of. I've, I've got a lot of text on my face, but that's no bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I don't always know how to minimise it. I did it the other day where I ended up. Um, with a lot of text and um, I'm not entirely sure how you get that yeah. back. Well, that's okay. It just means I don't have to look at myself. So that's good. <laughs> My, uh, welcome to this evening. And um, oh, it's such a pleasure to have you here and to be oh, thank you, Phil. Thank, and, thank you for asking me. Well, I will give you a short intro in a moment. Honestly, there has been a lot of interest in this evening and that just goes to show how this topic of being an empath or a highly sensitive person is actually something that I've really witnessed so many people wanting to know yes. more about. And um, this is how I first got to hear, about, well, not first got to hear about you, but I heard a podcast that mm. you were on and um, found out that you were a fellow kinesiologist and you explained kinesiology amazingly. It's one of those things that I know I've always found it really quite difficult to be able yes. to, to uh, express clearly and succinctly. And yet you did this so eloquently. And the other thing that blew me away was you talking as well so eloquently about being an empath and a highly sensitive person and your personal experience and then also what you've noticed through your practice mm. as a psychologist. And uh, so I reached out to you and we had an amazing chat. And uh, I think let's just crack on, let's get started. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for joining me and I'll pass over to you. Who are you and what do you do? <laughs> uh, well, I'm Phil Clubley uh, and I am also a kinesiologist and um, as you will know, when we're when we're working with our clients, we're muscle testing. We're using muscle response testing to get feedback from our clients' bodies. So our, our bodies are a repository of information. They they know what we need to be doing to heal. They know what we need to be doing to work effectively. But sometimes our our, our bodies just get so overloaded with stress and uh, energy that's affecting us that those signals can sometimes get a bit confused and and our body stops getting the information that it needs in order to work properly so the work I do is to is to unblock people's energy systems so that they receive the information that they need to move forward to progress to heal to live the kind of lives that they want want to lead um who i am myself i i i don't know um, 
uh, I'm married, I have two kids, um, I, I sing and play the guitar, I like fountain pens and historical places, haven't been to many of those lately. Um, but but, but I, just, I just love energy, I love working with people, I love seeing people grow and, and you know, blossom into the, the people that they, they want to be. Amazing, and again, boom, brilliant explanation. And Thank you. what I will say as well is that I am going to be keeping an eye on the chat box and I'm going to be keeping an eye on any questions that come in. So do feel free as we're talking, um, if anything pops into your mind, do feel free to drop us a note in either the comments or the questions and uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer them this evening. I've also got some other questions as well as we go through tonight. Oh, lovely. Of... Uh, from some other people who have uh, contacted me outside of here. So this whole idea of energy is something that I really observe that we don't talk that much about in, in our sort of cultures, in our Western cultures. And yet for me, it is one of the biggest areas that can keep people stuck. And when they have answers and information around their energy what i observe is transformation mm -hmm. it's knowledge is power and people are really uh, starved of this information because absolutely we don't talk about it so much yet it creates such massive aha moments for people and really helps empower them to make changes and yeah. talking about tonight is is really on the energetic spectrum isn't it the subtle body absolutely i mean it's, it's like it's interesting what you say about energy is like this massive topic but for the majority of people we're not even aware of it and and i think that's where we become stuck um you know it's like i always think that energy is information and we are surrounded by energy and this information and if our body's trying to tell us something and we're not listening then that message is going to get louder and louder. If we're responding detrimentally to something in our environment, but we're not aware of it, then we're not avoiding what might be causing us harm. And I, th I think it's such a shame that we're not more energy conscious. I'm sure the people listening to this will be energy conscious, but there are a lot of people who, who aren't. And I just think we're missing out on this massive area of our existence when we're, we're not in tune with that. Yeah, and I really love that idea about this energy consciousness. And I was just thinking of this sort of energy awareness and being mm. energy. And so this then leads us into this idea, um, which I think is gathering way more attention and way more limelight around uh, this idea of being an empath or mm. a high person. Now I've grouped these two together um for this evening but would you like to explain some slight how you may distinguish between being an empath or how you understand an empath to be as such and a highly sensitive person yeah absolutely i mean an empath to me is more a person who is resonating with other people and they're almost like a human sponge where any energy that's floating about they're, they're picking up on and a lot of people don't process their own emotional stuff. Um, they, they, just, they just can't. So their energy that is, is unresolved starts to overflow and it starts to look for somewhere to go to be resolved. Then along comes an empath, you know, open to everything. And this person latches onto them and the empath's thinking, I can help you, I can help you. And this person's going, oh, I can just offload my stuff here. This is all unconscious. But, you know, it's just like, oh, here, you, you can deal with this. You can deal with my dirty laundry and I feel so much better. A highly sensitive person can respond to anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like too much color, too much sound, too many people. Um, they might go out into the countryside and just be overwhelmed by nature. Uh, it, it's more that their energy system is, is either so open to everything that they respond to everything and even good things can just become too much. Um, or, or, or their, their energy system is so overloaded and stressed that they just don't have anywhere to go. So the tiniest little thing can, 
tip them over and that's often when we get allergies and intolerances to food because our energy system is so overloaded already then you eat some food and the body's going i can't deal with that as well you know actually you vomiting this out is far easier than me trying to energetically process that food for the next eight hours you know and so that's where i see the difference does that help absolutely love that absolutely and I um, I bought these together because they are still in this sort of energetic realm and mm-hmm. and they are part of our sensory system, the yes. senses as we know, but also I'd suggest the sixth sense too. Mm-hmm. And, but they are different and they do get triggered or engaged in different ways as you so beautifully described. And um, I guess as we go through, sometimes these two might blend. Uh, sometimes there might need to be the distinction between the yes. empath and the uh, highly sensitive person. But I'm curious, in your uh, awareness and in your experience, what do you believe is the most overlooked aspect or, or often overlooked around being an empath and, and this highly sensitive being where we are, I guess, open with our energetic body to this other information? Mm. God, that's a, that's a good question. Often overlooked. Um, I think maybe somebody who's empathetic or somebody who's sensitive invariably will think there's something wrong with them. You know, I'm, I'm feeble, I'm too weak. Um, you know, there's something wrong with me. I need to toughen up. I need to be stronger. And I think maybe the, the, the overlooked part is that the person blames himself rather than acknowledging that actually that's just the kind of person they are. And, and actually the world would be a much better place if more people were like that rather than fewer people being like that. Um, I think as well, I did have something else there, but it's completely gone along those lines. Yeah, self-worth that um, quite often if we're empathetic, we, we will put everybody else before ourselves. And that's not just from a notion of, oh, we should always do nice things for people. It's actually that we don't think we're important and we don't have enough self-worth to actually put ourselves first and look after ourselves. So we start to look outwards. We start to look at other people we can help because that that makes us feel good, like we're doing something useful, but it also projects away from ourselves. And this was something that I heard you talk about at the pod on the podcast with mm. David and I I this really started to blow me away because you then linked that to boundaries. Oh, I love boundaries. <laughs> and and this really illuminated so much for me because this idea around being uh, this empath and that there's something wrong with me and it must be me like that's something that I resonate hugely and um, I've gone on such a journey over my life with it and I have witnessed so many clients when they come to me their, their starting point is it must be me and that's mm. you know such a theme behind uh, these conversations because no it's not you there's yes. just a of great knowledge missing from our framework to understand ourselves and how to work absolutely every way so then moving on from that recognizing the link between being an empath and this lowered self-worth and that can then create lowered self-esteem and that can then create a number of partnerships as well that help to feed that number of relationships that will keep triggering that and keep it um going and so when you're in a place where you've got lowered self-worth and that can feed into steam and you're looking outwardly to rescue or support others, what impact does that have with boundaries? And oh, yeah, well, there, what impact does there that aren't have with any, boundaries? there aren't any boundaries. I th- you know, that, that's <laughs> half the problem. <laughs> it's like boundaries be damned. Yeah. And
Oh, can you hear me okay? The sick. Yeah, a little bit. It started to stagger. Okay. Yeah. from the chaff you know it's like actually my, I put my boundary in place and now I'm seeing the kind of person you are perhaps you're the kind of person I don't need in my life and look how my energy levels have gone up slightly now that you're no longer in my life so yeah boundaries are are incredible things hold on one moment um mm. I can, I'm getting uh people coming through saying that they can't hear oh no oh no um had a couple of people can you hear me now okay now okay okay uh, and, and more importantly can you hear me <laughs> yeah <can laughs> oh that's a shame oh I'm... so Catherine's not not hearing me i wonder why i don't understand i don't know enough about technology to know how i know i can i can hear you and you clearly hear me so um uh, I don't know what to suggest. I mean, uh, the old IT trick of logging out and logging back in, I don't know if that <laughs> well, might, that might be different. Sometimes <laughs> that seems to help anything technological. Um, yeah. Let's carry on. And then, Catherine, if there's an issue, um, which I would, I'm so sad if you end up missing this, um, the replay will be available and fingers crossed you will be able to hear on the replay. Yes. I hope so. I hope it's just a glitch, yeah. but, um, and if there yeah. are any, as we go through people, please do just drop in the comments and, uh, we'll see what we can do to rectify. <laughs> okay. Oh, best advice. Yeah. It's honestly, I'm all this IT stuff and nailing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really not um so we have this situation where then it can become really difficult to install boundaries and mm -hmm. what i'm hearing that can also start leading to this this notion around people pleasing and yes. um and uh, there was something else that came in as well and i feel like this is a really important point being like, courteous, considerate and caring for other people is beautiful. Mm. But what I can hear if you are constantly giving and constantly in that place where um, you are putting others before you is that that can easily lead to overwhelm, exhaustion, mm -hmm. and burnout. Absolutely. If then boundaries and that assertion on taking, recognising your worth and that you need to t take time for you. And yeah. I, I guess, do you see that a lot with, with empaths that, um, yeah, they're exhausted or can often be depleted? Yeah, absolutely. Because even if they're not necessarily engaging with somebody and listening to somebody and taking their stuff in, like I say, it's almost like the dirty laundry, you know, somebody just unconsciously offloads their, their, their energy, their washing on, on an empath, and the empaths go, God, I feel really tired today. They might be on their own, but their energy system's, you know, processing that stuff. Um, 
and, and again, that's where that self-awareness comes in. It's like, instead of just thinking, God, I feel really tired, I'll have a coffee, I'll have a lie down. It's like, why am I feeling tired? You know, start to, to be aware of, of your energy and how your energy is feeling in, in that situation. Yeah. And, and this then brings us into becoming present and to be curious whenever you're engaging with not just people, but it might be certain situations, events, circumstances, checking in with yourself to, yeah. to be aware of in that moment. How do you feel? And where yeah. is energy at? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is where I think a lot of introverts are empaths. And I think that's why they become introverted. Uh, and again, uh, I'm, I'm an introvert, which my wife never believes. She goes, but you're so chatty and, you know, you never shut up. And, and I love people and I engage with people, but I have a limit. And again, it's one of those things before you're aware of these things. I used to think, God, I'm a bit rude because I want to go home now. Or if I was staying with my wife's family, it's like, I'd maybe just want to go up to our bedroom and read and be on my own for a bit. And I thought, God, I feel really antisocial. <laughs> but once I realised what that actually was, I stopped beating myself up. Again, it's that thing. It's me. There's something wrong with me. And it's like, no, I get to a point where I need to be on my own. That's my recharge time. And I think that's a lot of thing with introverts is they can take so much, but they get to a point where their energy system becomes overloaded and they know that they have to be on their own to recharge. And the risk there is that they become too insular and too disconnected and it's like anything we we need to experience life in order to be able to understand it so if we completely cut ourselves off from people we're not going to become better empaths because we're never going to have the opportunity to practice our skills and set our boundaries we're just going to run away from it and we always need to be engaging and and trying and testing so rather than you know running away from people it's like oh my god i feel so overloaded it's like right what can i do to strengthen my energy system so that i can actually deal with this more beneficially for longer without harming myself and again that's where boundaries are brilliant and um i was thinking when when i was sort of thinking about what we'd be talking about tonight it's like empathy is this beautiful beautiful thing so if you've got a problem and you want to speak to me about it and i i'm hearing you and i'm witnessing your story and and i can give you the space to do that that's an amazing thing for you but that's not then for me to take that problem from you and deal with it. And, and I thought it's like if somebody falls in a hole, empathy is putting your arm down to help them out of the hole. It's not climbing into the hole with them and then going, bugger, now we're both in a hole. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not going to work. You know, that is not how empathy works. It's like we can listen to somebody. We can, we can give them the space to talk. It's not our job to solve their their problem and so again it's it's using tools it's having boundaries it's strengthening our energy system uh, but but the first thing we need to do is know that that's what we are you know i am an empath and and i and i need to use my tools effectively yeah absolutely that is the starting point isn't it awareness yeah. of who and what you are and and your truth that's what yeah. I just yeah stop thinking there's something wrong with you and um and i love that strengthening the energy system because mm. there's some, uh, uh, as we've been talking then somebody's put i love the boundaries how people no longer fit into your life yeah absolutely we change don't we and uh, yeah and, boundaries you know, really and, and that's that's how you decide who now fits into your life you know as we as we change and as we grow and as we move forwards we're going to lose some of the people in our life it's inevitable because they're no longer going to fit our model or we won't fit their model we don't fit their expectations anymore and it can be quite sad you can think oh they've been my friend for 20 years but we're in a different space it doesn't have to be a sad thing it's a sign of growth and that we're, we're moving in a different direction. You know, sometimes you have to be firm and you have to say, no, this is enough. But sometimes that's really, really difficult. And especially for sensitive people who are already overwhelmed and we don't have the strength to actually stand up and, and do that. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And then that feeds in beautifully to another comment, which says, ironically, setting boundaries takes energy, which I need to save energy for. So there's... Oh, there's that's, that's interesting. Now, that's interesting about um, boundaries taking energy. You're not doing your boundaries right, Abby. So we can talk about that sometime. But your, your boundaries are, are there to protect you. And if we start thinking... I need to put loads of effort into my boundaries. This is, this is a massive project. Our, our intent is in the wrong place. Our boundaries can be as simple as saying, not today. You know, we don't have to justify ourselves. Where boundaries become a problem is when it's like, oh God, this person's asked me for some help and I don't want to do it. So now I'm going to have to think of an excuse. So when I talk to them, I'm now really nervous about saying no to them. We don't owe people excuses. It might sound really hard, but we've got to put ourselves first sometimes. And that sometimes is saying, I'm really sorry I can't do it this time, but you know, hopefully in the future I'll be able to help you. We don't have to justify why we're doing that. We don't need to say I'm a bit run down today. I've got errands to do. I've already agreed to do something else. You know, we're then starting to generate this this sort of excuse when really all we're saying is. I'm just honouring myself today and this is what I need to do for myself. So I hope that helps, Abby. And it takes practice, doesn't it? And It does, and, and it is hard. But once you've done it a few times, you'd be really surprised how easily it starts to happen. Mm. Yeah. And so this then um, brings into another question that I was uh, outside of today or that I was asked which is how do I protect myself from others moods and emotions so this is slightly different this is less about like a particular request or ask mm. more about being in proximity and around others so the query is how do you protect yourself from others moods and emotions for example uh, I often find myself absorbing the emotions of those I'm closest to so rather than observing them and mm. what's going on them, I end up taking it on and so oh sorry and, oh I can end up getting brought down myself so yeah how do we protect or sometimes that word protect feels right sometimes it feels personally a little bit too guarded but how do we yes. keep their energy yeah, there but I think I, th I think for the sake of argument protect is a good word um, it, you know about protecting our energy so the first thing we can do in that situation is absolutely acknowledge that that mood belongs to that person you know in the first instance you know my partner's incredibly moody today rather than going down there oh god have I done anything wrong this is me it's me I've, I've, I've upset them rather than going down that path it's like okay they're in a low mood today that's fine that's for them to deal with that's our first acknowledgement that it, it isn't actually our our problem we can say you seem very grumpy today so is there anything you'd like to talk about not owning it not not fixing it for you but i you know i will give you the space for you to tell me what's going on if that's not if that's not happening that mood's still there you start to feel it's picking up on you uh, you know picking up in your energy system you can protect yourself intent is an amazing thing you know, energy's all around us, we're connected with it, and we can create the kind of energy we need. So put a bubble around yourself, put a cloak over yourself, you know, see a shield in front of yourself, which is deflecting their negativity. You know, my bubble is full of love, joy and happiness. Might be able to spare a little bit, see if I can, you know, cheer them up a bit. But only because I've got enough for myself already. I'm not I'm not giving away my resources, you know, but I have an abundance because I'm so happy and I'm so protected. And so that intent to just think I can go with this. You know, sometimes when we're happy, it actually makes another person even grumpier. If they're already grumpy and we're like, well, you know. I'm having a good day, uh, you know, that can cheese people off even more. It's like, I want you to be grumpy. I want you to share my misery. And again, it's them trying to give you their stuff to deal with. It's like, if you're in a bad mood, I don't know who I'm looking at. If you're in a bad mood, um, <laughs> that's fine. You, you can process that. I'm not doing your dirty laundry. You know, I'll lend you my washing machine, but it's your stuff to process. And, and I think that's, that's where to start with that. Don't, 
don't think it's for you to deal with, but you can put some protection in place, you know, make it lively. You know, I, I often, I mean, I don't do it so much now because I, I think I'm in a better place. I hope I am. But when I used to shield and protect, I used to see like little negative symbols bouncing off my my protection while i was surrounded by positivity and you know it's like i'm, I'm, I'm happy to take in positivity but negativity just bounces off my shell and it's again it, it takes a bit of energy and a bit of time to do that but once we've done it a few times it becomes second nature and we just get ourselves into that space yeah love that it's almost i'm reminded of of sort of velcro versus teflon so i almost be when you're um, open and, and, and learning how to be an empath or before you've learned how to be an empath it's like your velcro and then everybody like there's all these velcro stickies that start yes. to stick, which is other people's stuff and you're walking around and you're trying to, to process and get rid of other people's stuff but, but you <laughs> stuck to you and you carry it and everywhere you go it's there and then that's a brilliant what, way of looking at it <laughs> learn to work better with when well, you learn you become aware of your energy system mm. learn to work with it um in a more uh, powerful way then actually it's you become slippery and other people's stuff is around you and you feel it and you experience yeah. it Dick, you don't carry it with you throughout yeah, it just slides off water off a duck's back yeah absolutely and that's 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 the place that you know, I really encourage people to to be working towards, isn't it? So that you're not carrying yeah. feel. You can still be there for people, like you say, but yes. you're not it with them. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what it comes down to. It's it, it's not that by uh, having their stuff slide over us and not stick to us doesn't make us bad people who don't care. But we're putting ourselves in a better position. Um, a friend of mine, when I was talking to her about boundaries and self-love and putting yourself first, uh, she said, and it's an example I use a lot because it's so good. She said, oh, it's like on an aeroplane, you know, if the aeroplane's going down and the gas mask, you know, the oxygen masks come down. You've got to put your own on first because if you're not in a good position, you can't help the person next to you. You know, by helping the person next to you and the person on that side, by then you're overcome with smoke and, and you're no good to anyone. So again, you've got to be in a good position yourself in order to help people but quite often we can make space for people and you know if we're listening to somebody and and they're having a really bad day and they're really moaning and you think oh my god they are bringing me down a little bit again just think i don't have to take this on you know the teflon's brilliant it can just float past me i can hear the words i don't have to own the words um and and you know it's a, it's a really useful thing um I, another handy thing with that as well is our solar plexus chakra which is just on our diaphragm and it's that is the the process for when we feel uneasy and anxious but other people's anxiety also hits us there which is why if somebody tells you bad news you go hmm, that's where you feel it and so sometimes just surreptitiously you know pop your hand over your uh, solar plexus chakra and uh and and just just give it a little bit of protection and love just to stop any of that negativity that might be coming from somebody else actually going into into your energy system and i found that quite useful as well especially when i started out and you know people might be telling me something and i'd be going oh, i'm starting to feel this a little bit so you know just pop something in front of my my solar plexus and and again a lot of it is intent it's just suddenly becoming aware that your solar plexus has been activated can be enough to to protect your solar plexus it's like oh yeah god my solar plexus is really feeling this i shouldn't be feeling this this is not my stuff to feel my solar plexus is just going to repel that that's fine it can you know come out and then go around i love the teflon analogy that's fantastic and actually again when you i'm pleased that you've also linked this into the subtle body and the chakras because when you start to think about your solar plexus and that's an area of confidence isn't it that's where our, yeah. our but it's also our confidence center so again if this stuff's coming into that particular center then it's yes. going to scramble our confidence and yeah, one yeah, of the, it's, it's going to disrupt us yeah one of the things that i find as well is that our energy is constantly trying to sort and process but if it's mm. somebody stuff that's generated from their experiences in their life yes. we're never going to be able to solve it we're never going to be able to process it so we use a lot of energy just holding it and yes. it's, um, uh, it's like just going around in a washing machine, but it will never finish. Yes. 
cycle because we we can't process it we we're just holding it absolutely it and, and i mean the washing machine again is brilliant because while you're busy washing their endless cycle you've got your own pile of washing building up that you're not able to deal with because again your system is overloaded dealing with other people's stuff and yeah. it can be hard dealing with other people's stuff because like you say if it's not yours you might not even understand it you know so it's kind of your body's going oh god i don't know what to do with this but we've got it now we've, we've taken it on what am i going to do with that i can't put it down so yeah we we can we can get stuck i know when i started my training uh one of the ladies on the course she uh i think her mum had, had got some physical condition and th this lady had got kind of so bothered by it that she'd ended up taking on that condition psychosomatically then her mum, the, the pain went, but this lady was left with it and was had a, having a really hard time healing this pain because whatever it she'd taken on didn't have a basis in her own energy system in that way. And I, I, again, I just thought that's a really good example of just, again, support somebody, but don't take it on. You know, it's, it, it, it's really easy to just think oh i'll just deal with this for that person they'll feel better and i i can i've done a good thing but uh in the long term it's it's not beneficial it's it's putting everybody else's oxygen mask on before your own yeah and of course some of this is so unconscious as well some of this mm, we don't course. happening and and so this is what i would really um welcome to hear from you, what are your thoughts on, you've already suggested some of the ways in terms of bubbling up, I love that. I think it's just such a great way of, of bubbling up. And, um, but what are some of the things that you would suggest to help support people and their energy systems where they're starting to slip into these, these very overwhelmed states? Yeah, well, the, I mean, the first thing to do is, is be aware of your energy system. As we've said, you know, notice it love it appreciate it guard it with your life um once you're aware of your energy system you can start to do things that will strengthen it so i'm a huge fan of grounding and i think grounding is incredibly valuable um where we connect in with the earth we have roots going down from our feet into the earth we become anchored anything that we've got going on. If we have been taking other people's stuff on, this is a really good way of getting rid of it. It's like just giving to the earth what you don't need. Be really conscious of it. If I'm carrying something that I do not need, please take it. And, you know, as we're breathing out, we can see that stuff going into the earth. And as we breathe in, we see energy coming back in, up the roots, up into our body. And not only is that a really good way of getting rid of energy that we no longer need it makes space for new energy to come in that we do need but when we ground we're we're kind of supporting ourselves we're connecting in with the earth we're solidifying ourselves and we become more stable you know and if you think about a tree and roots going down into the ground that makes that tree stable it can still move in the breeze can still move in the breeze move its lovely branches around but it's not it's not leaving that spot and i always sort of compare it as well to a helium balloon which i mentioned in, in the podcast that if you're not grounded you're like a helium balloon you're a bag of gas on a bit of string and every every slight breeze is going to be buffeting you and while you're busy dealing with with that you're not focusing on the other stuff you can do but when you're grounded when you're rooted you're in a position to actually start thinking about things and, and often being grounded just slows things down a little bit as well. So you have a bit more headspace in order mm. to do some processing. Um, so grounding's brilliant. And, you know, it's all over YouTube if you, if you look at grounding. Um, but also meditation and yoga, body movement. Again, it's, it's just making your energy system more elastic and better able to deal with things and i was saying to somebody yesterday it's like about balance and the work that we do it's not about making us impervious to everything it's about uh giving us the tools and putting us in the position so that when things do come our way and they do upset our energy system that we can come back into balance quickly and smoothly you know it, it's not that nothing bad's going to ever happen to us but that we can find our center 
and we can deal with it in a much calmer and quicker way rather than you know three weeks of going oh my god i don't know what's going on in my life it's like 10 minutes of huh you know not sure what's going on but i i'm grounding i can feel my energy center coming back in i can start to visualize what i need to do to deal with this this issue and so that's what strengthening our energy is all about it's it's not about uh, protecting ourselves and hiding away behind a wall it's making us flexible and adaptable and and able to deal with those things when they come along love that love that and again you touched on slowing down mm. when it, when we've been bombarded with stuff that ability to slow stuff down is so powerful because it's the yes. opportunity to become aware and then once yes. we're and then then there's a so much more conscious choice that can start to come in I'm yeah conscious. and i mean and, and that's another brilliant boundary example i say brilliant you know to, not trying to blow my own trumpet but again i say to people if somebody asks you a question and you know it's like if somebody goes you know where's your child you need to think about that quite quickly but if somebody <laughs> asks you a question and you don't need to respond there and then you could say actually i need a bit of time to think about that and i'll get back to you with an answer you know we sometimes think we have to respond now 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 it's like they've asked me something i've got to respond they've asked me something i've got to respond it's like okay yeah that's a really good question but right now i'm not in a space to respond to that question i will answer it but i'll answer it when i've had time to think about it and again then we, we've got time to think about it when we're anxious when we're overwhelmed we we're like that we just respond to things and we're not responding to things consciously we're responding to things unconsciously from old programming that's not serving us and it's like slow it down just think about it you know i'm still aware that i talk quite quickly but it's a lot slower than i used to talk and um <laughs> you know again it's that it's that thing um you know my thoughts move very quickly and and my my voice tries to keep up with them um and, and it's really strange listening back to like these kind of podcasts and when I've done the radio and things and my wife used to say, when they ask you a question, give a pause before you answer it. And it's like in my head, there's this massive pause before I answer. But when I play it back, I'm literally talking on top of the person. And it's like, that was a massive gap in my head. But, you know, and, and so it, it's like, slow it down, give yourself time to think about it clearly. And again, it's all about honoring ourselves and our energy system when we do that. It's like, oh, I'm not just firing this off without consciously thinking about it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to give my brain and my energy system an opportunity to fully engage with this situation. Love, love, love. Every single uh, part as you're talking, I'm like, this is, I'm going to be listening back to this and taking. Uh, clips from this because it's so there's so much richness in oh it. thank you this is you know as you've been talking i can really appreciate when we are not told or informed or educated how to work with our energy systems mm. look at what they get bombarded with and yeah. they don't they in the energetic realm they then become us they they inform our choices they inform how we feel about people how we are receiving the feedback from others the relationships that are around yeah. us how we feel how engaged we feel how confident like they they will formulate our actions they will formulate our behaviors our thoughts our words our energy system is so profound and so powerful it and is an incredible incredible thing is really illuminate that tonight and i'm so so thankful um yeah that you have helped to air uh, and and i do agree with you it really is about learning to honor our bodies because yeah absolutely because if, if if you think about the energy system i think about the energy system as a translation device mm -hmm. so there's energy outsiders and some of it comes in some of it bypasses that energy information that comes in our energy system needs to decide what it's going to do with it it's like oh that's quite useful store that for later don't even, don't understand that might hang on to it for a little bit while i have a think about it oh that's useless get rid of it but it also transmits so our thoughts our feelings our energy system is transmitting that information it's, it's processing our feelings and giving it out so if we're in love with somebody or we meet somebody and we think oh i really like that person 
our energy systems already going right let's start sending out some signals and 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 so the more in touch with our energy system are the clearer that communication is and so if you are in a room where somebody's angry and then somebody else gets angry you start to feel the energy moving around that more people are going to get angry because their energy system's going right there's some anger there i'm going to take that in what i'm going to do with it well this person doesn't know how to deal with anger now they're putting anger back out now the person next to them is starting to feel angry and, and it happens the other way you know when you've got a room full of joy you know if you see somebody and, and they just make you light up and the next person lights up because our energy system is just taking that raw data and transmitting it straight back out so if we're in a situation where there's energy around us that's, that's unclean or unpleasant for us and our, our energy system goes, right, we can translate this. We can understand it. This is not something that we need to deal with. We let it go. And so the more in touch with that we are, the more we connect in with it, the better and clearer our own signal going out is. Amazing. Amazing. So anybody got any questions as i've got one more question to if anybody has any more questions please do just pop them in the chat box as we're going to wrap up this evening um so whilst we're waiting for anybody who's got any questions to pop them in the chat box i am curious in your opinion how is being an empath a superpower oh my goodness um I, it's, 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 it, you have it's a superpower because we can create a space for somebody to let go and process their own stuff. You know, somebody could be hanging on to something that is causing them harm. We know that trapped energy can become a physical problem. And by giving somebody the space and saying, I'm going to listen to you, tell me your story, they relay their story and they let go of that energy and that energy that could have gone and stayed trapped in their body and caused all kinds of horrible things has gone. And if that isn't a superpower, I don't know what is. Amazing, incredible, incredible. And um, yeah, the final question was just, is there um, any tips or ideas for children and adults to look after their energy? Um, We've already answered several of these this evening, but um, if you work with them, are there any particular crystals or particular oils um, or anything dietary that you can uh, suggest? Um, I, I wouldn't say anything specific like a specific crystal or a specific oil, because again, it depends what resonates with that person. And, um, you know, what's good for the goose isn't always good for the gander. So rather than it's like, oh, peppermint oil will do this for you, it might not do it for somebody else, but there are things that we, we can do. And it's like avoiding things like the news and crappy television can be great for us because when we, we watch television, we're, we're, we're shutting part of ourselves down. We're often just kind of dropping down a level and, and, and the signal from the telly, whatever the message that coming across from that, can, can start to infiltrate our system and bring us down. Things like soap operas and the news, you know, people can feel it when they watch those things. And it's like, so don't watch it. Um, and, and, and the diet, you know, looking after what you eat. So just, you know, junk food's fine, but not all the time, you know, make sure you're eating green leafy vegetables because that supports us. Walking in nature, you know, connecting with, with happy people. You know, it's like, if you know somebody who makes you happy spend time with them for goodness sake you know i know you can't at the moment but you know in general, <laughs> general times, yeah, times you can but you know going out into nature touching a tree you know uh oh my god i'm, I'm such a tree hugger but <laughs> I it's, do. it's it's an amazing amazing energy and you will feel the the benefit of that uh, like i said grounding is just brilliant but go and stand barefoot on some grass just stand there with your bare feet on grass and let the earth uh take away your stuff you will feel better you know it's really really simple stuff moving your body eating relatively well grounding in with the earth being aware of nature and and 
accepting who you are at this moment in time. You know, who you are at this moment in time is absolutely the culmination of everything you've been through in your life. And you are amazing. And in two years time, you will be even more amazing. But that doesn't mean at this moment in time, you're not an incredible human being who should be honored. And when we start seeing ourselves like that, rather than seeing ourselves as faulty or not quite right, we start to honor ourselves. And that can really, really give our energy system such a boost. Love that. That seems a perfect place to end this evening. And um, thank you. That's been so, so wonderful to hear your wisdom, your experience, your expertise. And as I've always said, like your ability to articulate some really uh, difficult things because they're more of the feeling, sensory mm. stuff bring them into these amazing tangible words is just uh, one of your superpowers oh, thank you so much but good questions as well you know my answers can only be as good as the questions i've been given yes yeah thank you <laughs> and, um, and yeah just wrapping up thank you so much that was brilliant and really oh, thank you so much for asking me and it's been so so good to connect with you today and um this video will be going up on my page i'm sure i'll be going up on phil's too feel free to watch it anytime you like feel free to share it with anybody that you know that you think that this is going to be helpful for them because this is the stuff that is unspoken about or not as oftenly spoken yeah. about and can have such a big big impact in somebody's life so um and yeah Thank you so much for everybody who's joined us this evening and so much thanks to you, Phil, for your time and uh, for gracing us with all your wonderful wisdom. And, oh, you're um, welcome. Pleasure. Thank you very much. So take care. Any questions or you queries, too. do just pop them in the chat box. Um, me and Phil will be looking back at the video, so we'll be keeping an eye on things and um, just thank you. So much love and wishing you all a beautiful rest of your evening. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Bill. Oh, where can people find you? I'm so, oh. so sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Um, so, um, philclubly.co.uk will will get my website. And I'm, I'm on Instagram as philclubly.kinesiology and on Facebook there as well. Um, but, yeah, if, if, you, um, if you look philclubly.co.uk, you'll definitely find find me there brilliant and i tag you as well so if anybody wants to i do tag you into the post so they will be able to find you brilliant. and uh, yeah again uh anything else that you wish to share before we end this evening um i can't think of anything specifically i think we've covered absolutely loads so i yeah. just hope i hope it it helps people brilliant yes totally i know it will i know it will i feel like there is so much in this last uh, 50 minutes that is really rich for people to be able to take away and digest and uh, you know start to integrate into their lives mm -hmm. so, yeah amazing thank you so so much Brilliant. and forward to connection again real soon take care everyone enjoy the rest of your night bye 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 <laughs>